Welcome everyone to the Holstein House Podcast. I'm the West Virginia woman, Robin of RobinHolstein.com and Holstein House, where my guests get a great night's sleep at a fair rate plus breakfast. This is a podcast that looks at society and culture issues affecting families in West Virginia and the United States, from food preparation and storage, gardening, home repairs, current events, and more. We'll go around the table and back in 60 minutes or less. So let's hang out and talk a while. Good morning, good morning, and good morning, Phil, the Philippine nomad. How are you, Philippine nomad? I am Robin. It is Friday, September the 15th, 2023, and this is episode 98 of the Holstein House broadcast live, answering questions on hosting a and b from your home, fall and winter pantry food preparations, storage questions, and more. Today, it's uh, unscripted, unscripted fr- Friday live, unscripted, and we just talk about whatever, really. Um, I do have a few things lined up just in case, but um, I thought we'd talk a little bit about maintaining my 2005 Chevy Colorado, uh, the transformation of the uh, utility cart, the 4x8 thing. Um, I've seen it listed as a trailer. I've seen it listed as a cart. I don't know. 4x8 is not that big, but it's it's big enough for what I want to do. Talk a little bit about how good help is hard to find, (laughs) even when you pay for it. And uh, just general things we uh, need to consider when you're running a B&B from your home or from your small homestead or, heck, even, I guess, a big homestead if you want to. (laughs) And some things you might consider uh, as you get ready for winter. You know, we, we... we want to change things around. We need to have different supplies for different emergencies. So maybe a little bit about that. The doghouse roof is completed. So the next steps uh, and what's going on over there. So I'm glad to see everybody here this morning. We have Mike for sure here on the YouTube. We don't have anybody over on Rumble yet, but is this cable? bumping that it looks like it is maybe not maybe not uh oh rumble don't see anybody over there yet rumble is the dumbest thing i you you go with the you know when you're using Streamyard, and you put in the um the server id and stuff you need to put in to stream live over there and you can't connect and it, it, it's a StreamYard issue in the big picture. You can't connect Rumble with StreamYard the same way you do YouTube and uh, Facebook. So with YouTube and Facebook, um, excuse me, I got some allergy stuff in my nose. Is itching. So with YouTube and Facebook, you can you set it up once, one and done. And you every now and again, you have to refresh the connection. But you don't have to go back and put in the, um, the configuration um, every time with rumble every time i schedule a live number one i can't do it more than 24 hours in advance and number two i have to go in and get all those configuration keys again every time and update it every time so it it's a frustration to use uh, rumble through Streamyard. there is a different one i saw some folks using and i can't remember the name of it I need to go back and look at the uh, their YouTube because they mention it a couple of times to see if it has better options or better may- maybe better rates or something um, than StreamYard. But I, I kind of think StreamYard's probably the uh, the Mac Daddy of um, the live streaming platforms. <clears throat> so how is your Friday going so far, you guys? Um, I still feel like this is. I know it's not, but it still feels like it must be hung on a button or something. Oh, it's got a little twist in it down here. That's why it's pulling the way it is. And then, of course, bless their hearts, my my podcast folks have to wait till I upload the uh, the file, the audio file. I don't know if I could. I've never tried. 
streaming straight from my phone to record on um, for Fountain and the podcasts or not. So the Philippine nomad is feeling and doing unbelievably. I am so glad you're having a good weekend. It is kind of chilly here this morning. I keep the house, this time of the year, I keep the house uh, air conditioning thermostat on 74. Now, I know that sounds kind of low, but the problem is, is that it's cooler outside. And to bring that humidity down in the house, I kind of have to drop it a little bit inside too. But I <laughs> don't let it get up too high anyway. Uh, and it is like six degrees cooler outside than it is in the house. So I have some doors and windows open uh, and the screens, um, the screens in them and just letting that fresh air flow through. I don't do a lot of coffee talk on my, because I usually use just store-bought coffee. I don't, I have some local brewed coffee, I, I, beans, I keep that for my guests um, until it starts getting, you know, once it's been opened about a year, the beans kind of get weak. Um, but uh, I'm using, I'm drinking some instant uh, uh, international foods, cappuccino flavored kind of instant coffee stuff. It's got caffeine out the hind end, <laughs> and it's kicking me all over the place this morning. But that's in my in my uh, my family is unconventionally diverse cup, and what you see is feet, human feet, uh, duck feet, dog feet, cat feet, and chicken feet on there. Available on my Etsy. Linked below. <laughs> Philippine Nomad says, is the Colorado a full-size truck or an SUV? Well, that is interesting. The Chevrolet, pardon me, the Chevrolet Colorado is the is a um have, are you familiar with the S10? The Chevy S10. So Back in the day, it would go uh, S10 Colorado full size. So it would have been a mid size truck. Um, and it had uh, several optional packages. Um, I didn't get manual transmission I, because I couldn't, the, where I bought it, the place I bought it from has been out of business about 10 years now, but. When I bought it, you couldn't get it the way I wanted with a manual uh, transmission. So I had to get an automatic transmission, but it's got the air, it's got the, it's got the heat and air, the AM, FM, um, with a CD, DVD player. And they had a couple options on the size. And I got the crew cab, which is the full back seat. Um, that because the boys were home and their dad was over six foot tall and I knew the boys were going to be at least that and you needed the full size the crew cab in the back to seat full size full grown boys full grown teenage boys so I got that so I got I it was the uh oh she was she was a pearl at the, at the time and um we we took her we took it and got i should say him because i'm driving it it's, it i should call it a him we went to the dmv to get our license plates and i got a personalized plate and it's her truck and i got teased because of the way i spelled it but i spelled it purposely so that it would fit and instead of being one big jammed word people trying to figure it out there was a, a, a space in between the words. So you saw her and you saw her truck. So I got teased about that. But we also found out that they had, uh, that the personalized plate, his truck was available. And Mr. Holstein was driving a, um, I want to say his was a 2003. Um, and how this rolled out, I had just, uh, I had switched jobs, gotten a decent promotion. He had, um, he had moved into a different job and it it was the prices were decent enough and we could do it so within a couple of years we both had brand new trucks and i mean mine my colorado man three miles on it 
3 miles. So you know that that mileage was just driving it from you know inside the plant where it was made onto the truck, off the truck, onto the shop, you know, at, at the dealership. You it, it, it wasn't it, it didn't get any highway riding. But uh, we took we ended up both putting money back and and got us um, the spray and bed liner professionally done and tonneau covers but he ended up trading his truck um, mm, it's been about four years ago now it was before the rona he ended up trading it for a ram ram truck it used to be dodge ram we still slip up and call it a dodge ram but it's just ram now um and it was a sweet it had been a corporate truck and it had all kinds of bells and whistles. Well, he still has it. All kinds of bells and whistles. I still have mine. I love mine. It is the only brand spanking new vehicle I've ever purchased and paid completely for. And it's she's he's it's got some it's got some issues. It's got some flaky wiring now. It's uh it's got some rust in the bed that we couldn't see because of the spray on liner. And uh, but it it the, I I use it. I mean, it's he's had to replace the uh, the engine in it, and uh, do you know basic stuff to it, stuff that it would have cost a small fortune to have done if we had to pay. And women, I'm telling you, any ladies that trip across this show, and you're still listening now, I'm telling you, if you're a single woman, you find you a man that can fix stuff. Pardon my French because I don't usually speak like this. <laughs> Screw those techs that work from home and 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 do coding and stuff. Yeah, you got big money, but it's going to take big money to do everything you want. Get you a man that can fix stuff. Get you, hey Carla, get you a man that can fix your plumbing, your HVAC, your automobile, your Automobiles are going to get to where you can't fix them before too long, if not already, because they're just so highly computer gadgety. But the guy that can sit and code can't change your oil. And right now in my little Fiat, my little red Fiat, if I take it to the Jiffy Lube or the Valvoline, we used to have Jiffy Lubes, now they're all Valvolines. Uh, there's a different one. Some, is it a Penn's oil? I, don't, I think it's a Penn's oil. It might not be pins oil, but it's it's um it's not Jiffy Lube. Anyway, if I take it to the Valvoline for an oil change in my little teeny tiny, just barely bigger than a smart car, a uh, little red Fiat, it takes a hundred bucks to change the oil in it. That baby doesn't even have four quarts in it. The filter and the oil and the labor, it's it's stupid. It's absolutely stupid. Mike the Philippine Nomad, please meet Carla Hoskins. Carla, this is Mike the Philippine Nomad. He's he's one of my longtime YouTube uh, fo uh, members or followers, I guess, because it's not a membership. Mine's not a membership. Carla's a Carla's a longtime friend too. Her, her husband, her sister-in-law, good people good people so the um the truck what's going on with the truck for the um the battery cable clamps i guess that's what you call them the clamps that go on the post they've never ever fit right on that truck and we've replaced them a couple times. And there's something about the design of that truck that those cables will bump and, and wiggle. And, and they just think there's something about the electronics in the, and it, it builds up a lot of corrosion, even when he puts stuff on there for corrosion. So I'm constantly dealing with a battery issue. Um, and even, I mean, it was only a couple years old and it, it, it just crapped out on me uh, taking my younger son to school. It was raining. And uh, so I run him to school. Otherwise, he would have walked. Um, and it just crapped out on me on the side of the road. And I gave him the umbrella. And I said, you take the umbrella to school. I can walk back home. It's only, you know, in front of town here, a quarter of a mile. 
and um, went back and, and it was the battery. The battery was dead. It was only a two-year-old battery. But we've always had trouble with, with uh, batteries in the truck. Um, but I went out to get in it the other day. It, it, it's not charged. And it, it doesn't connect good. So it doesn't charge good. And you can try to clamp, you know, tighten it down and it still it doesn't doesn't want to work right. So I, I went out this morning and I, I toyed with, I thought, you know, this is the kind of stuff you need to, to video and post because, you know, you're, I don't have to do this stuff. I've got a husband who can do this stuff, but I need to know how to do this stuff. And so do other ladies. And you should, we shouldn't be afraid to do some of these basic things. But I thought about it and I'm like, nah, I won't do it. <laughs> so I went out and, um, put the uh the little little charger on the uh on the battery and i looked at the at the uh, gauge and it, it kind of bounced from you know if it's if the little needle is pointing down of course you read the the gauge thing in the window anyway but um so the little needle was down when it was off and when i connected it it, it kind of bounced just a little over halfway uh but the way it reads to me is like t lower is up and then hundreds in the middle. And I guess it has to do with whether it's a 12 volt or a 9 volt battery or whatever, that kind of stuff. And he already had that part set. That part I don't understand. I, I try and I just, there's a, a block somewhere in my brain uh, when it comes to electricity. But um, so the, the needle bounced. And then all at once it dropped back. Well, I heard a little spark and I thought... Oh, one of the one of the clamps has come loose, so I I fooled with the positive clamp and and it didn't didn't change it, and I fooled with the negative. Well, the negative terminal is the one terminal is the word I was looking for. Terminal is the one that has always given us fits, and I I just don't get it. I just don't get it. And so I put it back on there, and it kind of just a little teeny little you know almost like static electric spark, not a big pop or anything, but just a little staticky sound. And the needle bounced back up. And I stood here and watched it for man, man, 30 seconds or so. And uh, it stayed right there. And I thought, well, that's fine. So I messaged him because he's at work. And I said, this is what I did. He said, the cables may be dirty again. Or a little loose. Because it wouldn't start. <clears throat> um, it's probably the battery's probably okay. I said, "Well, can I? I'm gonna just leave it there for a couple hours and see." And he said, "That won't hurt anything anyway." So I'm gonna go. I'll go out and check when I when I get finished here and uh, see how it is. But it, it's always it's always been had a battery issue. I don't I don't know if it's a design flaw or just just our luck. <laughs> I don't want to get into that. So Mike says. For those of you on the podcast, Mike says, and I don't usually say this either. Damn, if your lady can change her Fiat tires and you can't, you best do a Michael Jackson and beat it. And don't let the door hit you in the <laughs> in the rear end <laughs> or where the good Lord splits is where a lot of that. don't let the door hit you where the good Lord splits. Um, I haven't changed the tire. I In my life, I have changed a tire. Um. What I found, what what I found, I had, a, I, I had to, you guys know the um, um, Chevy Chase. Um, oh, darn it. Where is it where he's the dad and he's got this huge family? What's that dumb movie? And they, they have that Chris in this Christmas vacation is the big one that did real well. What's the name of those people? Um, darn, I can't think of it. Mike said, uh, Mike Loco Estoy is just chilling in the monsoon heat over in the megalopolis, metropolis, Manila. You be the killer for Manila? Or is it the killer in Manila? I can't remember. You'd probably be from, though, because since you're down from down there and, and um, Muhammad Muhammad Ali was just in, over there. But anyway, whatever character that was that um, 
Chevy Chase uh, played that is the main character in those movies that I can't remember. Oh, I almost said it. Anyway, he drove this big Buick Roadmaster estate wagon uh, with the stickers that make it made it look like it was wood uh, wood paneled. I owned one of those. I owned one of those. Buick Roadmaster estate wagon. I loved that car. I paid for it. It was paid off when I traded it in, but well, I sold it. But I sold it to one of those auction places and they got rid of it. But um, yeah, it was it was awesome. It got pretty good gas mileage for a, a honking huge car that size. And um, um, Griswold, Griswold, Clark Griswold, and uh, that's the character. So it um, it was huge. I loved it, but it had electric everything. It had electric seats and it had leather seats, leather seats. They were electric. It had you know the AM FM. It had had, had or and a um, uh, CB in it, not factory, but it had had one because we found where they had mounted it. It was huge stereo. I mean, I loved that thing. And I drove it until there were holes in the wheel wells that came into the um, the the back end, the bed of that station wagon. Oh, man. And I needed it at one point. When I was married to my second husband, we had custody of all of our children, full custody of all of our children. So there were four boys, four boys. And uh, so my boys ended up sitting in the very back and his boys were in the middle because his boys were very young, uh, three and two years old. And they were off the chart um, behavioral issues. They were, they were, they were really, really um, difficult children. And I believe they grew up to be difficult adults because they are in their 20s now. But uh, yeah, that was, that was a, oh, I love that car. Flat tire. I, well, so how I got onto the Buick estate wagon, <clears throat> I was, uh, we were talking about tires and I said I had changed one and um, I had a flat on the side of the road and I, I called I had gotten all but one lug nut off and I had the, I had the car jacked up to get the flat tire off to try to change it out. And one lug nut would not come off. And they weren't safeties. They didn't have, now the, the, um, the hubcaps had a key. I had to use a key for the hubcaps, but those, those wheels, those lug nuts weren't, they didn't have anything special going on. But one of them I couldn't break. I couldn't get it loose and I ended up calling my dad because I was, you know, I was trying to get to work and um, he was impressed that I was able to get the car up enough to, you know, on the jack to, to get it where I could get to the tire and get it moved. But he ended up because my dad had has been a welder. Uh, he's been a welder all his life. He didn't always work. That wasn't always a thriller in Manila. That's it. That was the fight, the thrill in the in Manila. But um, Dad didn't always work as a welder, but he was always a welder. He was a certified welder out of high school, and um, he brought a torch and he heated the lug nut and he cut that puppy off there and finished changing a tire. Now this is many years ago, so he was still able to do that. Finished changing the tire for me, and I took uh, because I took good care of that car and I took it back. I took the tire and the lug nut that he cut off back to the place that had, had rotated my tires. And it was a local guy here. And I jumped all in his face. I mean, not in his face. I mean, I wasn't like spitting on him or anything, but I jumped all over him. I said, don't ever. I said, Freddie, I always bring my, my vehicles in here to you. And you know that. And, and I'm, you know, don't ever have your people put my tires on with the impact wrench again. Don't do it because I'm by myself and I'm on the side of the road and I'm trying to change that tire and I can't break that thing. And I want to say that um, it, I can't, my, my memory on it is spotty. 
on it, but it seemed to me that it had to do with using the impact wrench on an aluminum. Um, I don't know if the post was aluminum or if the lug nut was aluminum or the rim was, there was something about using the impact wrench on the, on aluminum and getting it too tight and it seizing or something. I don't, I don't remember all of that, but I do remember that it was a big deal and they never did. And the next times I took the car in to have the tires rotated, I said, don't you use that impact wrench? And I would be within earshot, you know, cause I'm sitting there waiting on my car and they didn't do it. I didn't have to try to change the tire on it again. But I knew at that point um, I didn't have to. <laughs> National Lampoon's Vacation. The only thing I didn't have on that Buick Roadmaster estate wagon was the um, luggage thing. I mean, it had the rack, but I, in, for the movie, I didn't have the thing with the luggage on top. It had the luggage rack, but I, I didn't use it. It had a what they called a moonroof, which was just... Um, you know, uh, it was it was um, dark glass so that the sun didn't get through and and and, and um, bake your car. But it was a permanent. It wasn't like a sunroof where you could open it up and the air would blow through. It was it was just a permanent. It was a little bubble of glass that was on there. Oh, that car! I love that car. <laughs> oh, the things. My very first car, and I think I've had this conversation with people before too. My very first car. Oh, let me see if I see I've got some windows open here. For, I was going to show you guys some pictures here in a minute. Let me see if I've got a picture. It's not my original picture, and I have to tell you that because it's um uh it I swiped it from a site. It it's probably from one of the um original uh promotion pieces of promotional material at a dealership. It's 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 I don't know if it's right. I don't know how far back I have to go to get it. <laughs> I don't want to spend all day going back. But I've, I've talked about the uh, the first car I ever drove. It belonged to my dad. My dad bought it from his cousin, which was my cousin too, but it was his first cousin. Darn it, it should not be this far back. Um, oops, oops, oops. Have I locked up here? Uh, tick, tick. I'm going too fast for my equipment here. My windows are, are locking up because I'm trying to scroll too much in my poor little computer. Well, I've absolutely got to upgrade this, but I just hate to do it. It's just such a pain. And yeah, there's a lot of stuff that's on the cloud, but I own a lot of my software. I mean, back in the day, you could bought your own CDs and you install oh it's it must not be on here because it I should have come across it by now. Um, back in the day you bought your software and it included all the upgrades until they brought the next version out and then they um, stopped supporting your version. Then they decided that uh, it all had to be it all had to be in the cloud and you had to rent it, which is what you're doing. That's all you're doing is renting it. You don't get to keep it. It's not yours. You don't have a hard copy. Oh, oh, here it is. Oh, I found it. Let me see. Let me share this. Now, remember, this is not my original picture. And I hope I hope I don't get in trouble from uh, from someplace for sharing a picture that's not mine. Um, almost. I mean almost to the person. Oh, I shouldn't say person. Can you see that? I guess you can. It's almost the exact color of the one I had too. So what you're looking at, for those of you guys who don't know, is a 1971 Ford Pinto. It is the little little brother to the Mustang. And um, of course that little little Pinto horsey right there. But um, 
this is almost the identical color except that my dad eventually paints it blue and it was a blue color that matched my high school colors he didn't paint it because of my high school he painted because that's what color vein he had uh, another different cousin because dad had had a few cousins uh, asked dad to paint a car for him and he had paint left over so he painted the pinto blue and yes this is the model if you rear-ended it would um, would uh, ex explode <laughs> so the gas tank on that thing was uh, located um, outside the body of the uh, pardon me, uh, outside the body frame. And so if you, if you, if you were in a wreck and it got hit just in the right spot, that supposedly that the gas tank would explode. Um, I, you know, I don't think that, I mean, my understanding of how all that works, it, gas would have caught on fire. Uh, if you were almost on empty, then the fumes would have exploded, I guess. But, and, you know, that's that's back in the day when when you could have fun in a car and it was a manual it was a manual five speed so i learned to drive a five speed and and once dad let me drive that after i got my license he never saw it again he bought it to drive to work back during the first um gasoline crisis in the 70s because there was a couple of them and uh, back in the first one he bought it and uh he drove to drive to work so he didn't have to drive his one ton because he had a one ton truck. <laughs> Carla says, we had a lime green one. We always called it the lima bean. And I got real slick at reattach the exhaust with a pop can. Not sure exactly what she's saying there. I got real slick at reattached. The exhaust with a pop can. Silly car dragged every single time I drove out of Poker River. Ours was, a, oh, she must, that must be a, a typo. There's a typo there, but she says ours was a stick shift too. I think most of them were. I don't think you get into an automatic transmission uh, for a couple of, of years of that, uh, of the Pinto. I even had, uh, I don't, I don't think I have a picture of it anywhere. Uh, in my mind's eye, I don't remember having a picture of it, and I loved it. We didn't have it li long. <laughs> my first husband, when we were living in Fort at Fort Hood, Texas, we were actually living in the city of Killeen in an apartment complex. Um, we bought a bobcat, which people used to tease me and say it was a pinto. Um, and I guess it kind of was. It was a mercury, a mercury bobcat, and it was the the cutest orange and black colors I, I you know it just really was a sports package of some sort we only had it about three months he ran a red light and destroyed it he was fine i was furious and um we ended up with a ford fairmont futura which looked like a um a sporty car but it really wasn't uh it was a dark it was like a burgundy color i don't think i have a picture of it either i drove it into the ground I keep my vehicles. I keep them for a long, long time. Oh, reattaching, reattaching her exhaust. She took a driver's test in a turquoise Pinto station wagon. That was one. That one was automatic. Um, I don't remember. I don't think I, by the time, what was I driving? I was probably, let's see. I drove the Pinto um, even after Doug and I were married while I lived at home and he was in basic and then I took the Greyhound to Fort Sill, Oklahoma when he graduated took it wasn't Greyhound but it was some local bus charter bus to um from Killeen to Fort Hood we lived on we lived in we stayed in base in the base guest housing for I think three weeks. Found an apartment that was walking distance to um, the gate, one of the gates. We should have picked the other end of, but we didn't know then. Um, so he would he would walk, um, I don't know, three or four blocks to the gate base gate, 
and he could catch an on-base bus to uh, his unit. And he did that every day for several, I want to say, um, a couple of months before we could get out to get a car. And we got out and took a taxi. Every, Of course, we had to take a taxi anytime we went anywhere. It was beyond walking distance. Took a taxi over to one of the dealers. Test drove the Bobcat, bought the Bobcat. Paid a heck of a lot down. A lot. I mean, we didn't finance, but, you know, a couple grand of that car. And um, he trashed it, and then we didn't, because it was his fault. We had no money saved back to buy another one. Had to get the money from my parents for a down payment on the uh, Fairmont. And uh, drove it until we come back home in 86. And uh, then we got a Dodge Omni, which was like a Chevette. It was the same size and everything. Um, had the Chevette. The Chevette then. We had the Fairmont and the Chevette. And then the Chevette to... He wrecked the Chevette. Almost killed him. Then I got an old um, Cadillac DeVille. It was like six years old or something. And then the muffler fell off. By that time I was divorced and the muffler fell off. And I got the um, Roadmaster and I traded the Roadmaster in, ended up getting a Subaru station wagon, legacy wagon, had the Subaru, then the Roadmaster, and the Roadmaster to my truck, <laughs> and the truck to the, yeah, I got the truck, and then I bought the Fiat, and I had both the Fiat and the truck. Mike says, you're going way back machine with that Ford. How about those 70s AMC Hoopties wagons? We had a 74 Gremlins, Hornets, Javelins, Pacers, Matadors. I didn't have any of those. I had a, I had a cousin that had the, um, oh, it was a Toyota. What was that Toyota? It was like a single man sports car Toyota thing. I've got a picture of him. He lives down in Titusville, Florida. Oh, what was the name of that? Now, Mr. Holstein had, their family had the gremlin. Um, he didn't specifically, but his parents had a gremlin. Mm -hmm. Mom and dad had, um, mom had a comment when I was little. It was red, and the smell from the fabric, the plastic inside, just it made me sick every time I got in it. She had a comet. She had what was that blue car? Um, Dodge Dart, one of the one of the first Dodge Darts, I think. And what else did she have? She had a Dodge van for a while. Oh, that was a nightmare. My dad hated that thing. He ended up bypassing the starter. It had so much trouble. He ended up bypassing the starter and made it. You, you just had to put there was some kind of button. You just mash this button and it would start. And then they had a Ford Ranger. And then I don't remember what all they've had since then. We've all had Saturns. Oh, Saturns. I forgot the Saturns. We had uh, Mr. Holstein and I had a couple of Saturns. Uh, a 98 and a 2000. They weren't new when we got them. We only gave 600 bucks a piece for them. In the early 2000s. One of them had a bad engine. And he could buy an engine and replace it. <laughs> but I've spent. Oh gosh. I've spent a half. Almost the whole time this morning. Talking about vehicles. <laughs> Didn't mean to do that. But. Uh, walking through the park. And reminiscing. 
but yes, yeah, so the, I mean, the, the whole point of that was just talking about you, you, should, you, you need to be able to do a few things. You need to be able to check the oil, change the air filters, you know, change a tire. The, I, the thing about changing tires, though, is that if those nut, lug nuts are on tight, you know, you just almost, even sometimes guys can't do it on the side of the road. They just can't break them free. And you can get stuff to put on them, I think, to keep that from happening. Anti, is it anti-seize you can get? I think you can put, get to put on those. But, um, you know, you need to you need to be able to do that or, or have a plan for it. You know, make sure that your auto uh, coverage includes towing or roadside assistance. Um, some of them don't. Some of them don't. Our our auto insurance doesn't include glass. So, and we're constantly, oh, that's something else on my truck. It's constantly getting busted windshields. I've put like six windshields in that thing. And it's cracked now. It needs replaced now. And it hadn't been that long. Uh, it's like the, I don't know if it's the angle. And so the stress, you know, the tension that's on the glass. And so the slightest little thing will pop it and make it. But I absolutely have put in. And, you know, a, a, a windshield is around 500 bucks. Well, my, our deductible is a grand. I can't turn it in. They're not going to pay anything on it. And who wants to keep hitting the insurance for, I mean, I don't like paying $500 either, but who wants to keep hitting the insurance because they'll just jack it up all the time. But there's some stuff that we need to, you know, we all need to know how to do. And um, as the winter's coming along, make sure you get your oil, you get your fluids changed that you need to get changed. I know in my truck the um, the antifreeze needs cleaned, but he I flushed and, and stuff. He won't do it. He said um, it's not showing any signs of needing it. It's a sealed system, and I forget what else. Uh, so we we have never done that. The, the, it does have something leaking in the back. I swear I thought he said differential, which is a phrase I've heard. I kind of have a general idea what it is but I, I don't know I don't drive it much anymore I just drive it around local so I don't know that that's a gigantic deal um, it's a it's a slow leak whatever it is but we have to understand and know that too you know as the uh, as the bad weather's coming now uh, Mike down there I think is getting ready for for summer Oh, da, da, da. my sister Mike says uh, my sister took her driver's test with our '76 Civic Honda Civic. Yeah, I tested with the Ford E350 Super Cargo van. <laughs> oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! A giant car! Wow! Wow! Uh, huge, huge cargo side mirrors, no rear view, 400 engine, 22 gallon main, and 17. 17 gallon tank reserve jeez louise man <laughs> why you should have went and got that little little civic take that test in that little civic everybody complains about that i didn't hear me the um the learners the learners test i i missed by one the driver's test i did fine but see we had when we had our drive when i had my driver's test there was a the state police would do it. you'd go to the state police uh, in uh, in South Charleston, and they had just a little course set up there off the road. They had a couple of cross a cross areas, so that if you blew your traffic, you blew your stop sign, you you failed. But this one was a straight through, and it went. You went. How did you go? You pulled out. You went down, and you come to the first stop. You turned right, and then you pulled over here, and you parallel parked, and then you come over here, and you backed in, and then you come over here, and I forget what it was yield maybe and they wanted to see you look and then you come back around and you didn't have the stop sign there and then you come back out to the parking lot so uh if you missed that very first stop sign you blew it straight off the bat but um oh it was a dotson it was a dotson my cousin had mike uh, i don't know if it was a 240z but it was a dotson come to think of it um it was a yellow car and he was, you know, he was a single guy. He was all about the single life. Um, but yeah, so I, I mean, everybody wanted something small because they didn't want to parallel park some gigantic piece of equipment. Now, I tell you what I did, what was harder for me was my motorcycle endorsement. I, when I took the, I took the course, the course 
and you 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 did um, you did a test at the end. And if you pass that test, then you got your endorsement because that was part of your uh, you motorcycle license, and you didn't have to go down to the DMV and um, take a, take the test again. And I almost blew that. I I I I fishtailed a little bit uh, when I had to stop her hard, but I didn't. It was the only error that I had made, so it didn't cause me to fail. If I think he could have two mistakes. And you could still pass your uh, motorcycle endorsement. And I, I fishtailed right there at the end. But And I could see their expression. They thought I was going to drop that bike. They thought I was a goner. But um, no, I did fine. I did fine with that. And then I, I don't ride my... I haven't ridden in a long time. The bikes have been uh, put away. He gets them out every now and again, starts them up, moves them around. But I, just, I don't have time. I just It's crazy. I don't have time. Carla says, all our cars growing up were... Bondo budgies. They should be showcased in a museum as examples of Appalachian ingenuity. The Pinto. Pinto had a lot of Bondo on it. Daddy put a lot of Bondo on it. Our driver's test was in Winfield. Um, we could have gone down to Winfield. We, uh, some people went out to um, Golly Bridge and took their test. They said it was easier to pass. They were more lenient. It didn't matter. I took, I took a driver's ed class. Um, private class. Mom sent me to. I was lucky in that way, Mom, Dad. If uh, if it was uh, an option, um, they would they would pay for it. So, um, would it come time to go to to take to learn to drive? It was um, it was, and I think that point. I think that class gave them insurance credits too. You got to break on your insurance if you went to this course, um, Capital Driving School. You had a lot of in in classroom stuff, and you had a lot of hands on driving and stuff. So um, it was good. It was good to go to. I paid for my da first daughter in law to go to uh, to that school to get her driver's license because I told her I said in life you and and, and I mean it sounds terrible, but and I love my son, but I know life is hard and sometimes things happen. and And I told her I said you need to be able to drive. I mean she was nineteen years old, almost twenty at the time, I think, and she didn't drive. And she said, well, he can take me wherever I need to go. But see, her mother didn't drive either. And I said, no, honey, you don't understand. If he falls and breaks his leg and you have to take him to the doctor, you can't drive. If he's gone, you know, if he's in the service and he's gone, you need to be able to drive yourself. You, you can't function in this world, today's world. Well, <laughs> then she got her license and then they had some issues and she left. Not like right away. I mean, it was a while later, but they divorced. But I still feel like it was important for her as a woman to know how to drive. Carla says, there was one lady cop that everyone prayed not to get. She failed everyone the first time. I got a different lady. Uh, it was Army Day at school. My mom forgot my clothes, so I took my test in dad's. And mom forgot my clothes, so I took my test in dad's. I'm sure you mean your dad's car. Oh, and your dad's fatigues and hat. I later trained that cop as a nurse when I was a shift supervisor, charge nurse. Oh, okay. Yeah. Always good. Always good. But yeah, I think it's important for women to be able to do a lot of stuff. I mean, there's some things that we just can't. We don't have the body strength for. But but I think it's it. Oh, I never did take it off. Oh. <laughs> that on there. I keep, you know, I always forget to take those off. People, you guys need to remind me. Hey, it's still up there. <laughs> Uh, Mike says we had driver's ed in high school, then driver's training vehicle with brake pedal passenger side for an instructor. Yeah, Mike, they offered that too. The problem with the high school uh, driver's ed training was uh, you couldn't get in it. You couldn't get in it. Seniors got priority. And there was always more seniors wanting to take the uh, the driver's class than there was uh, uh, available um hours in the day and in the week for the for the driver's ed instructor so 
but yeah, we need to start thinking about the things that can go wrong in the winter um, as we drive around and, and we're, we're doing things. And one of the big things is to have some sand in your vehicle so that if you get hung up in the snow, if you're in an area with a lot of snow or some kitty litter, preferably not used kitty litter. I don't know. Um, they make a light, a very lightweight kitty litter nowadays. I wonder if that would be as good because then you wouldn't have that much weight in the back. Because for me in the Fiat, it's going to make a lot of difference whether I have a, a, a big bag of play sand or contractor sand, whichever, or a jug of kitty litter. If I, if I filled an empty jug of kitty litter with sand and put it next to a jug of the, of the lightweight kitty litter. It's going to be really different. The weight's going to be really different. That will cause me to use more gasoline. So. Well we really haven't gotten on to. We've spent this whole thing. This whole day today. Talking about automobiles. Carla says she wasn't allowed to drive. Until she could check fluids. Change a tire and jump start. I've not had to. Um. I haven't actually had to jump start a vehicle. Um, the few times that I was in a position where I either needed jump start or was going to help someone jump start, um, some guy would always come up and say, "Here, I'll do that." I'm like, okay. I mean, I knew what I was—I knew what I was doing. But it's like, if that battery goes, <laughs> let it go on you, because <laughs> it can be dangerous. Those batteries can. Can they can maybe not maybe not uh, as bad as what I think, but it used you used to hear stories about the batteries could blow if you weren't careful. And you know people get all tore up. Oh, which which thing goes on what? Well, it, you know, you just match the colors nowadays. Most everything's color coded. But if you have good insurance, you don't have to jump your own battery anyway. Oh, one of the other things I was going to talk about is, 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 is so many other things. Is good help is hard to find. I uh, I'm I'm at the point. Um, so we've got the roof on the doghouse, and I, I shared that with you guys Tuesday. Um, it's done. It seems to be a good job. I spent some time yesterday afternoon out in the yard cleaning up our things, getting some things sorted around um, because you know I want to offer a little bit of the of the yard as a quick camp. Uh, for a little while and see if that takes on and uh, kind of like I have the Airbnb here that would be just for one to two nights not because we're not a campground but it'd just be one or two nights uh, for folks to tent camp who may be passing through um, there is um, the self-reliance festivals coming up and I thought you know there's a there's a group that I've offered uh, the days before and after self-reliance festival to uh, to to camp if they're coming uh, down my way to go out to to the self-reliance festival but um so i needed to get that tidied up a little bit but the the long run i have to get that building cleaned out and so um the guy who cuts our grass um he does a great job um, but um i asked him i said you know grass cutting season's coming to an end would you like to help me clean this building out and if you know i'll pay you for it and that way you'll still have some some money coming in because he's concerned about paying his taxes i don't want to get into too much of it his father passed away almost a year ago to the day his father had paid the first half of the year's taxes and of course he passes away before he pays the second half and they're going through the estate they don't catch that um that the second half weren't paid and now they're in a spot and there's some grumbling going on back and forth between um his brother who hurried up and did everything he could to to shut down the probate fast and now it's looking back it's caused a problem um so there's these back taxes and there's an issue and i don't want to get into all that but anyway so he's worried about paying the taxes and um i said you know i i'll pay you to help me and all he does is just grumble um well, you know, um, I'm up there in age. He's four years older than me. Well, I, my shoulder, I can't lift. 
I'm not asking you to take out utility uh, out uh, appliances. You're not going to have to move a refrigerator. You're not going to have to pull a stove out. Well, I uh, I can't use my vehicle because you know it's on its last legs. I was never asking you to use your vehicle. Never never asked you. I have a truck. You know, I'll haul stuff out in my, or you, if you want to use my truck, you can use my truck, or it, I'll, or I'll haul it. Oh, I don't ever drive anybody else's vehicle. There's liabilities there. No, no. If I'm not on the insurance, I'm not driving it. Okay, it's fine to say no. You just can just say no. It's it's okay. Well, I, my knees are bad too, and now if if Wayne was here, I'd do it. It'd be no problem because he'd be here. But I can't. And at this point, I use the person's name and I said, look, just, just you don't you don't want to do it. It's fine to say no. It's OK. Don't worry about it. I wasn't expecting you to do it at all. I was going to be there. You were supposed to be helping me, but that's OK. You don't have to. It's all right. Point being, good help is hard to find. <laughs> and, you know, I I, I, I was going to pay him. I was going to pay him. And um I mean, I was going to pay him more than just like five bucks an hour, which I was going to pay him a fair, fair rate. And he, he got the idea of him doing it alone because when I initially asked him in a, in a message, I said, I need someone I can trust that if I have to leave and take dad somewhere, they're not going to, you know, rob me blind or, or quit on me or whatever. You know, I need somebody who who can be flexible so that if dad's not well, then, you know, either you can do it or not. You know, if we decide not to do it because dad's not well or if I have to spend all day with at the doctor's office or something, I just need somebody I can trust. I, I could trust this person, but I, I use the phrase in the Telegram group uh, chat. I, I don't have time for whiners. Because that's what I was getting. I was getting whining. Well, I can't because I can't. Just just say no. It's okay. No is a perfectly acceptable word. Especially on a yes-no question. <laughs> but it's it is. It's hard to find. I could I could put a sign out or I could put a post up in the Facebook and I'm gonna get all kinds of drug addicts and thieves respond to it. Um and, you know, whether they show up or not, who knows? You know, I, I, you probably don't remember. Uh, I don't know that I had the, um, well, I've talked several different times about trying to get somebody to help me here at the house, like housekeeping. I think before I started the broadcast, um, I know it was, I was looking for somebody at that point, too, to help. I, I had a girl work or a woman working for me for about six months and then she moved down south to be closer to her children. And I can't blame her for that. She worked out just fine. I could, she could get in. It was no big deal. I could trust her to do the job. And, but, um, I, I posted, uh, a, tr a regular, you know, uh, job posting on, um, Facebook through the Holstein house page that I was looking for a housekeeper. And that I would be paying, but that I wanted to report it. You know, I was, didn't want to pay under the table. Um, and they needed to be prepared to subject to a background check. I had three different times I had people say, I'll be there on whatever day at 10 o'clock to talk to you about it. Never showed up. Never. Showed up. What's the point of saying, oh, I'll be there if you know you're not going to be there? But it's uh, it's it's tough. I mean, you know, I I don't have the type of ex I don't have extended family enough that that could come and help, even paying them. And I don't like to take advantage of people, you know. So I do pay people f for helping when when it's necessary or trade or whatever. But uh, yeah, I don't have the extended network that can come and help me with that. And it's very frustrating. And there's a lot of older people here in town, and and then a lot of folks my age, which like this. Uh, the guy who I was talking about just now that's just groan and moan and complain. He's a very negative energy person. He sucks all the positive energy out of you. But he does excellent work on the grass. And I can count on him being there. So that I, I don't, you know, I don't, um, 
I don't have to worry about it. I know when he says, I'll be there Wednesday at 10 o'clock, it won't be Wednesday at 2 o'clock. It'll be Wednesday at 10. Or he will message me, there's a rainstorm coming through. It, I'm going to have to wait. You know, it's fine. But I do, I, I have a lot of stuff, a lot of, a lot of things. I think the British say shift, a lot of things to shift and get out of there. And um, there's just not enough hours in a day and there's not enough of me. So Mike says to Carla, we had a drill DMV, and oh, drill instructor at the DMV too. Uh, my buddy ex eked by with her. Next in line, she failed me by three points. Okay, I guess you needed 70 to pass. And Mike failed, and she failed Mike by three points. He got a 67. Then two weeks later, I passed with just a few dingleberries with a 92. Oh, well, I guess, okay, so 70 was, was the fail mark. And Carla says, I'm a bit surprised I even learned to drive. My dad was a drill instructor at one point. Shift. I must make use of the term. Yeah, yeah. I see. We love a lot of the British comedies and stuff. And uh, they're, they're always talking about shifting this. And uh, If you were watching Downton Abbey, there were several times they said they couldn't shift something. And in the movie, the first movie, when, when they announced that uh, the king and queen were coming to visit Downton Abbey, um, Mary is is caught off and saying there's there's a mark on the carpet in the I think she says there's a mark on the carpet in the bloom room we cannot shift so shift getting the mark out so um yeah shift and bend and all kind of stuff I I love watching those shows I really do my dad says he doesn't understand them there's some of my that they go over my head too but um there's some of them if you watch them uh, if you watch them and repeat and you think about what's going on over there at the time, you know, you, you catch it. And some of it's just, you know, cultural because there's stuff going on. We'll say political over there that, that's, that they know about in, you know, that, that we don't have a clue. So see, now I've got three watch. I'm always watching them. I'm always, my, my Amazon prime only has like three shows on it. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Waiting for God, which is one of the British comedies on Brit box. Um, Downton Abbey. Uh, friends, all the we got. I got all the seasons of Friends. Sherlock Holmes with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch. A couple of Sherlock Holmes with uh, Robert Downey Jr. I thought he was making a third one, and I haven't seen it come out yet. I'm anxious to see that. Um, the Marvel movies. I'm I'm bored with those. I haven't watched those in forever. Um, oh, there's a there's a, a British comedy called My Family, which I like the early years, but the latter years are just. Oh. Um, that's a couple other ones that we watch. That's that's almost all I I have on my Amazon Prime that I watch, and a lot of times um, I'm I'm dozing off to them. Uh, Mike says. Robin, we're on our own too. If I'm not around, it's just my wife, herself, and her. Hey, that's a lot. <laughs> Me, myself, and I, we get a lot done. There's a lot we don't get done to. That's why I told her I was only going to get her a new car because I don't wrench no mo. I get it. I get it. We're coming up on, I'm doing brain calculations, Mike, on uh, how long how long do the average cars last in today's world and how old am I and where am I going to be in 25 years? So at 58, I'll be, um, you know, kind of up there in 25 years, be close. I'll be my dad's age. I don't want a house payment. I don't want a car payment, but I also don't want property to take care of. Um, so I I'm doing those mental exercises now uh, I'm not get I'm not like calling up the attorneys to do the paperwork on the property but um, we're you know we're we frequently talk not in long conversations but we frequently will say to each other um, you know are, are we going to Florida because Florida has the hurricanes um, are we going to uh, 
Georgia? Are we staying here? I kind of want to stay here, but unless things improve a lot, I don't, I know how the nursing homes around here are and the, um, and the uh, senior living facilities around here. Mm -mm, I don't want to no part of these, the ones around here. I really don't. I will fight tooth and nail to keep dad out of them. And he, he will too, but I mean, I'll fight tooth and nail to keep him out of them because just, I don't want any part of them. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking, but then what, what I'm looking at, Mike, and, and you, you may be as well. Um, are, if I buy, let's say, okay, so I think it's, um, um, darn it. I almost had it in my brain. One of the little, uh, um, economy Japanese car manufacturers, not Toyota. What is the one? Hmm. I can see it in my mind's eye. Everybody's got them. Ah, anyway. You, if they, they get like these 100,000 mile, you know, 10 year, 100,000 mile warranties on most of the vehicles. If we're being forced to electric cars, then what? Number one, I can't afford an $80,000 electric car. I don't want one of those wee tiny little $30,000 electric cars. Kia. I think it is it. I think it is Kia. Carla. Carla said Kia. Um, I, I, don't, I don't want one of those electric cars. And um, Mike says... They have all kinds of British humor on those streaming sites. I don't watch any videos except YouTube Odyssey BitChute. I'm not familiar with BitChute uh, in the Prepper Farmstead communities. Um, I, you know, I watch, I do, I play a lot of those, Mike. As a matter of fact, um, my, uh, before I was getting, while well, I was getting things set up here, this is my um, Kindle. It's one of the older Kindles and my little um, headphone. I'll stream YouTube's through Kindle and and have that on and have that Kindle sitting somewhere that the signal reaches fine while I'm doing all the other things so that I'm not sitting there staring at it. And treat it kind of like a podcast for those who don't have those YouTubers that don't have podcasts. But my brain needs a break uh, and I need um, uh, brain candy, if you want to call it that. I don't, there's a lot of the a lot of the shows I just can't. They're just too stupid and I just can't. I am so tired of, you know, feminism went from treat us equally to all men are idiots. And I don't jive with all men are idiots. My husband's not an idiot. He's a very smart man. There are areas that he's not as smart. And I shouldn't say smart as knowledgeable in some areas as I am. And there's a lot of areas I'm not as knowledgeable as he is. But he's not stupid. And even if he does something dumb, it doesn't mean he's stupid. And I just don't like those kind of shows. A lot of the, sh a lot of the broadcast network shows I don't watch. But um, uh, he finds a lot of, a lot of old shows on, um, on YouTube. Uh, what was some of the old... Um, <sighs> Bella Lugosi did a... Um, almost like a um, chiller show where they're horror films um back in the probably 50s um i can't remember the name. and it may actually have been chiller for all i know but he'll run across some of those really old black and white and i just oh my gosh i don't you know it's not my thing either i'm really funny and moody about a lot of stuff like with television and um and music and and food <laughs> i'm very moody about all all kinds of stuff so it um it's hard for me to, i i like the amazon prime streaming we got rid of our direct tv uh we use sling tv now um it's very very affordable you, you just you don't get the local channels and we have to use an antenna but we have a fairly strong uh, attic antenna 
that picks up all of the local channels that we need, plus some because there's these weird things that they broadcast now. I guess they're coming from the local stations, but they're just weird, weird television shows. Um, what's that one he watches a lot of now? He watches H and I, like the ampersand H and I, and he, um, it has the Star Trek and it has all the westerns and stuff. And I can't stand westerns and the original star trek is okay but oh gosh but he likes to watch the certain game shows the old people's game shows <laughs> wheel of fortune and jeopardy every weeknight and i just i do watch them with him but i'm like is there nothing else on you know i just never did like them very well i'm just weird that way and books i'm not a big fan of fiction I have some fiction in my in my uh, library, but I'm a nonfiction person. I really am a nonfiction person. Mike says Hyundai, Hyundai and Kia, Korean Toyota. Oh, Hyundai and, and Kia are Korean. Toyota, Honda, Mazda, Mitsubishi, uh, Suzuki are Japanese. These are the popular models here. But most of them are built in Malaysia and Thailand now. I wonder if the if the um, Hyundai and Kia are are uh, the we get here are Taiwanese built too in Malaysia. I still would rather. I know it sounds terrible, but I still would rather buy a vehicle that if we could get it made in the United States. I mean, I get it. We're importing a gazillion percentage of the parts from uh, Japan anyway, but I don't, I don't see a problem with wanting the majority of the things that you buy made in and around you. Now I get, you know, we, we get into our conversations every now and again, the United States is almost like a bunch of little countries, kind of like Europe, you know, we're a bunch of little countries countries our, our states but because we're such a huge land mass okay so i you know like if you're over in europe i get that you're that that you're going to probably buy a german car or or, a, or an italian car if you live in france or spain i get it but I would still, I, that's still kind of like the same landmass, right? So you're still, it, I know governmentally it's, it's a different, they're different countries, but it's still the same landmass. I just think it's so dumb to be importing so much stuff from over across the oceans on either side, on either side, uh, and, um, and, and not have, you know, that stuff made here. But they just announced that the, UN, the, uh, not the UMW, not United Auto Workers, UAW, you know, busted out in strike last night. We used to survive strikes all the time. The problem is that the, that, and of course my dad was a UMW coal miner, so we had periods where you know, he'd be on strike for almost a year. But the, they're striking. We're, we haven't really recovered fully from uh, the Rona backlog of and and Pete Buttigieg's uh, magnificent uh, handling of all of those um, ships that were sitting out uh, in the oceans waiting that couldn't dock and all the uh, um, supply chain failures and uh, transportation just disaster related to that. We haven't gotten over that yet, and now we we've got. And I'm not saying that they're right or wrong for striking. Uh, that's not a comment on that. It's just a general comment on the economy that we haven't recovered fully from all that other stuff. And part of, part of the reason is because we import so much of that stuff that um, it's it, you have to get it from there to here. And, eat, OK, let's let's talk about how, oh, how wonderful electric cars are. If we're not manufacturing them here in the United States, how much fuel is being spent and how much pollution is being created, you know? hauling them across the ocean and the ones that don't make it i don't i mean every now and again ships go down and there's cars at the bottom of the ocean and the trash and the nastiness one of the things that really that will fr frost me 
is that we hear a lot about all these plastics in the ocean. Well, I'm going to tell you, it's not my plastic. I'm not saying we shouldn't clean it up. Don't get me wrong. Not my plastic. My plastics are not even coming near the ocean. My plastics are all out in the canal of landfill. They're not going on a ship anywhere. But the, they forget, you know, we've got people screaming now uh, about the pollution in the Pacific. Uh, Mike, I don't know if any of that affects, has affected you guys down there. But when that tsunami hit Japan and just washed all of that crap out into the ocean and it hit, gets in those um, underwater currents, you know, and, and yeah, it may be slow, but it, it, it gets out there and it gets around. I mean, that's that, what do you, that's mother nature did that, but those are human made things. And, but that's not because, you know, I'm using a plastic straw from McDonald's. You know, we, we, all of this stuff, I don't know. I could just be out there for days talking about this stuff. Mike says the U.S. imports are usually built in country or imported directly built in Korea and Japan. Better quality, but U.S. labor costs and retail prices are higher than in the Asian market. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't know if, because I'm seeing more and more with the um, post-Rona I'm and and, I, and it may be a more of a supply chain precaution post Rona. I've seen more and more of the um, clothes and stuff like at at Walmart being made in uh, India and Malaysia and um, Taiwan, you know, as opposed to China, where we used to get so much of that stuff out of China. I'm seeing not so much. I, I'm not, it's not that it's a huge change, but I'm not seeing it. Um, the clothing that I'm seeing uh, are Indonesia, you know, are 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 not made in China. You know, Vietnam, um, Vietnam, Indonesia, India. I think that's. That's all I can come up with at the top of my head. But uh, I, and I don't know about uh, better quality built in the United States. Not anymore. Not for a long time. I, like to, I think we like to talk a big game, but I don't know that that's actually, um, actually true. We need to look at that. We need to, because I am not opposed to, to decent wages. I, I am um, people need to be paid decent wages, but there becomes a point where um, you can only the wage the wage col collapses under its own weight. Um, I'm gonna I'm just gonna use I'm just gonna guess at at at, at rates here for a minute. If if someone's making fifty dollars an hour to do the same repetitive motion, like weld. Mm, what are we welding? Um, welding um, these hinges for the door. So the, the machine holds the door, the car is coming down the conveyor, and my full job all day long is to weld the hinges on the doors so that the doors on the, you know, so $50 an hour, and that's all I'm doing. Well, now you got to know a little bit about welding where you used to. Today, a lot of it's so computerized, all you got to do is. is is point and shoot kind of you're gonna but you're doing that same repetitive motion every day all the time and you want so you're get, say the example is you're getting paid $50 an hour to do that and you want a $5 an hour pay raise um what's that job really worth in the out in the in the world out in the wild at some point, you're going to get to where it's just stupidly insane to pay what somebody thinks they ought to be paid for a job. We're a better example, actually, of it of the uh, in, insanity and imbalance in in pay 
is not long ago, there were hundred, uh, it was like $700 sign on bonus to work at fast food. And they're pushing for $15 an hour fast food wages. And yet, in this same county, our 911 uh, call center people, our um, fire department professionals aren't paid that kind of money. And yet we're wanting to pay. We, we have people out protesting to pay people who literally turn over hamburgers on a grill. We want to pay them $20, 15 to $20 an hour. Things are out of balance. And we've got to, I, I don't know how we do it, but we have to bring things back in balance to where the people who save your lives are paid a better wage than people who put ha put a hamburger together. And when I worked at, uh, <laughs> and, I, and I admit it's close to 40 years ago when I worked at McDonald's, um, when my son was, was still being spoon fed baby food, um, the, the, all you did was point and shoot your, your, the mayonnaise dispenser. It was, it looked like a, a little grease gun and it had a little, uh, design on the end of it and you just squeezed the handle and it put the right amount of mayonnaise. And so every, every one of them got the same amount of mayonnaise and ketchup and mustard and you put two pickles on the little ones and four pickles on the big ones and you put them together and there is no skill to that you're not mixing the the mayonnaise every day you're not you're not a chef at a four-star restaurant i mean it's things are so out of whack i I sympathize to, with people when they say, look, these corporations are, are profiting millions of dollars. They're supposed to because people's retirements are invested in these places. Well, the president of, I, I'm just going to say Ford, I don't know. The president of Ford is making, you know, $100 million a year. The president of Ford has a lot of responsibility. Is it $100? Is it worth $100 a year? Not to me, but apparently to their shareholders because they have meetings and they have votes on this stuff. It, it's not on me to tell the president of Ford, you make too much money. Now, if the president of Ford had a, had a, a crisis of conscience and, and decided, you know, the corporate president of this corporation should never make more than $100,000. Make it so. Make it so, number one. Do it. You know, change the change the uh, the job description and, and the salary. I mean, I get it. It is insane money. But if you, you know, if you want to change that, buy the stock, get in the meetings, and change it. Who was it? Who was it not too long ago? Uh, some organization got, um, I'll say, infiltrated because now I don't remember by some um, all politically correct types, and and they changed the they voted and overturned and changed the corporation. You know, they got in, they did it from the inside out. I and. It's dumb, but yeah. Mike says, uh, Bangladesh and China are the winner, winner, chicken and pork skin dinner for mass market apparel manufacturing. And he also says, nobody over here, the Philippines, would ever dream of $15 an hour to flip baconators and quarter pounders. I'd pay $15 for a quarter pounder. <laughs> I love quarter pounders with cheese. I do. And I love a Whopper, the Burger King Whopper. But I usually, if I get it, and I don't very often, I very seldom, um, I, I get Whopper Junior. Whopper Junior with cheese. Mm -hmm. There's just, and I, it, it has to do with the condiments is exactly what it is. It's, it's, I don't know if, uh, I don't know what brand of uh, condiments that Burger King uses, but their combination is 
just it's just the right combination for that sandwich plus it's grilled mike says at 15 i was fortunate to stock shelves for three dollars an hour at long's drugstore now cvs while my classmates slaved 10 jobs 10 jobs man at mcdiabetes and murder king <laughs> Don't be going all Bob Marley on me there, Filipino man. Of course, it's late over there. You, it's um, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna tell you what I did. Oh my gosh, it's eleven thirty here. I've almost I've gone over by half an hour today. I never do that. Well, I have on occasion, but I don't. I did put on my phone. I don't know that you can see the world clock. I did put Manila. I put Manila in my world clock, so I know it's eleven twenty-five over there. You should be in bed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, my first job was three something an hour, I think. Uh, and the first uh, the first job I had that actually cut me a check that wasn't babysitting, I was a receptionist at an H and R Block, which was is a um, tax prepare 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 tax preparation place, and it was at the mouth of Witcher Creek, which is a mile from here. Um, I left that job because they told me I couldn't take off to go on my senior trip and I said I'm going see ya you know because at 17 that's what you do <laughs> but I also worked uh, I did go to work for Wendy's International um, my cousin was actually the manager and uh, he got me on I worked there for several months and um, I just kind of got tired of the drive and it was interfering with school and stuff so I I left. I don't remember how much. I was probably making the same three something an hour over there because it was about the same time. I thought I really was big time. I was um, separated, not quite divorced from my first husband. And I worked for a, uh, it wasn't manpower staffing, but it was very similar to manpower, but it was a local company um, doing some uh, um, research, political research at the courthouse with a few other ladies, uh, we were making $5 an hour to do that. And I really thought I was big stuff. I really did. That's when I really knew I could work something besides fast food. And that got me started wanting to um, take uh, courses at uh, an adult uh, education center in Charleston. And I took uh, three computer classes. I took Windows, which of course is the operating system. But I kind of didn't really get that part at the time. I took Microsoft Word and I took Microsoft Excel and it was like Excel 2 or something. It was way back. And um, the guy at the desk, when I signed up, can you handle all of these classes? And it really upset me because he was questioning my, I hear you know, I was a grown woman at that point. And I'm like thinking, why are you questioning what this? You know, are you sure you can handle these three classes? Why wouldn't I be able to? I went to high school and took seven, you know. <laughs> but anyway, I did take them. I did well. I got my certificate somewhere still. And I ended up on the road to working in the office you know, as an administrative uh, assistant, secretary, and uh, legislative specialist, and on and on and on. Yeah, my uh, uh, my H&R Block is still a thing, but they're not where they used to be they were absent from my general area for a long time and now there's another one mike says i love the new and improved baconators here they're huge double patties smothered in cheese when wendy's arrived in the philippines 20 years ago i said where's the beef i yeah where's the beef i wasn't working for wendy's when uh, that was the the all-time greatest commercial where's the beef but I remember it because I had worked there. Um, and uh, the Budweiser frogs, you know, there's just certain, I'm, I'm sorry, Budweiser, you've just, you, you shot yourself in the foot there here a few months ago. I was never a beer drinker anyway, but I love the Budweiser frog commercials. There was whoever come up with that was a genius. So they, they just were great, but um, yeah, we could do a whole, whole thing on commercials you can you guys find a lot of those on the youtube now but uh i think uh i know there's a little delay so i'm going to take that into account and i'm going to start winding down um 
So uh, it's, uh, it is Friday and I, I've had fun. I'm glad that Carla and Mike were able to chime in. I'm a, sorry there was nobody hollering at me over on the, um, the rumble. I, for those of you who wonder, I, I sometimes say the Facebook because Betty White, the great, late, great Betty White used to say the Facebook. And I thought that was just too cool. Mike says, American fast food chain meals here are very small. Well, you know, there's not much land down there. <laughs> you are an island. You are an island. I want to have you get down there one of these times. I have to get my I have to get my passport renewed to do that. And I have to have somebody watch the chickens. But I'd like to do a little bit of traveling before my days are are confined to uh a, a, a waiting a waiting for god style that's what i that's what I, that's why i like that old uh, british comedy show waiting for god i think it ended uh, in the early 80s uh and um, there was like five seasons was about all it was and <clears throat> it's set in a it's not a nursing home because you're not allowed to be sick to be there it's a retirement home retirement village and Mr. Holstein has on occasion commented that uh, he'd like to retire to a retirement village. And uh, um, yeah, I get it. I get it. And some of the ideas is, would be great. Aloha, mahalo, Carla and Robin and everyone else out there in the interweb land. You have a good night, Mike, the Philippine Nomad. And I will see you again online somewhere, I'm sure. Get some rest. Um, we will do this again on Tuesday. Good Lord willing and the creek don't rise. And it'll be a little more structured, I think. Fridays is kind of just, you know, laid back. But maybe I'll have an update. I was going to talk a little bit about the um, um, the trailer that I was working on. Maybe I'll have a good update. I did post a little bit of a, just a short, like, you know, a four or five minute video on the YouTube. And I think it goes up. Uh, it's either already went up or it goes up tomorrow. Um, on that and I'm just trying to make it a cute little project if I can and um, but yeah Mike says my sister out in Bakersfield will visit us as soon as she renews her blue passport yes yes mine expired during the Rona and we never actually well I used mine in high school but uh, Mr. Olstein, we both went and of course I renewed mine and he got his and we just never took him anywhere we had some plans and uh, you know you know plans uh, we decided to do other things so but i am going to go um um um, um i'm going to say goodbye now at this point and i am going to uh not read anymore so if i miss it mike i'm sorry i'm gonna roll this over here and get ready to hit the outro music give myself a couple more seconds for everybody to hear me and know that that's what I'm about to do. And I do appreciate you uh, being here today with us. And if you have watched this on the replay, please comment, say, I saw this on the replay and I liked it. I didn't like it. I would like to discuss when are you doing this to ask a question, make a comment. It'll be great. It'll be great. And we will check in later and you guys have a great weekend. And with that, I'm going to call it. Take care, and we'll see you again on Tuesday. So, there you have it. Post your comments, do all that boosting, liking, sharing, thumbs up, and stuff that helps spread the word and poke the algorithms. Follow me on most of the big social media platforms and look for my name, Robin Holstein, or Holstein House. Till next time, bye bye.